Facebook says it is fighting back against those attempts to influence voters and create discord. The company announced it has removed 32 pages and accounts. It says we're trying to stoke political and racial tensions. More than 290,000 accounts followed at least one of the pages. Facebook says it can't with certainty say who's behind the campaign, but the company noted similarities to Russia's Internet Research Agency, a firm whose members are accused of interfering in the 2016 election. Michael Morell is a CBS News senior national security contributor. He's also the former acting and deputy director of the CIA. He joins me now from Washington. Michael, thanks for being with us. The director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, said last month that U.S. digital infrastructure is under attack. He said, quote, the warning lights are blinking red again. So is this the kind of operation he was referring to? Tanya, um, yes, exactly. Um, he was referring to a broad set of operations, everything from cyber espionage and getting inside networks to steal information, um, getting inside networks to do damage um, to networks and to the data in them, and the use of computer networks and social media to spread political influence, disinformation, interfere in elections, interfere in democracies. He was talking about the whole thing, but this is, this is a key piece, yes. And, and so how can, what can you tell us then about how interference tactics aimed at the U.S. have changed since the 2016 election? Tanya, it's, it's clear the Russians um, learned from the mistakes they made in 2016. Um, for example, in 2016, they used Internet addresses in Russia to conduct their influence operations. Um, they're now using virtual private networks that make it look like those attacks are coming from someplace else. Um, in 2016, they paid for some of the political ads with rubles. Now they're paying with other currencies. So they are going to much greater efforts to hide their tracks um, so that they, so it's more difficult to catch them. And so, Michael, what does the U.S. need to do to protect its elections from foreign influences like this one as November approaches? So we need to do, Tanya, I think we need to do two things. Um, we need to defend ourselves. Um, there's a couple of bills on the Hill that have been introduced by, by bipartisan, bipartisan groups. Um, they're designed to both protect election systems um, at the state level, and they're designed to require anybody doing political ads online um, to, to, to say who they are, um, just, as, just as any political ad in print or on regular media does. Those bills need to move forward. Those bills need to pass. And most important, Tanya, we need to deter Vladimir Putin from continuing to do this. It's absolutely clear that the sanctions to date um, which, in my view, have been slaps on the wrists, are not enough to get his attention, and we need to we need to impose deeper, more broad sweeping sanctions to make him feel the pain of doing this, so that he thinks twice about it and perhaps stops. So, what kind of sanctions would you recommend? Because yesterday we heard Vice President Mike Pence talking to the Department of Homeland Security at their cybersecurity summit, and he said the U.S. must be prepared to respond to attacks. So if U.S. intelligence can conclude that Russia is behind this, how would you like to see, specifically, how would you like to see the administration retaliate? Tanya, so far, both the Obama administration and the Trump administration have done very targeted sanctions at the individuals and organizations involved in these activities. Those don't, those don't deter. Those are actually worn in Moscow as badges of honor. What Vladimir Putin is afraid of is his middle class coming out into the street and saying, we want a greater say in how we're governed, um, we want, we don't like the direction our country is going, and we want you to go away. That's what he's afraid of. So what we need to do is put sanctions on the Russian economy that hurt the average Russian, that hurt the Russian middle class, so that they start putting pressure on Putin to change his policies. Michael Morell, thank you for being with us. You're welcome, Tanya.